me before, Uncle. If you this is goodness gracious me, you're gonna get fucked up tonight. I don't do none of that fucking shit comedy. Look at these two white people sat on their own shitting themselves. Get a shot of these fucking racists. Look at this. Where are you from, Dave? Is it Dave? What is it? Neil. I call you fucking Dave from now on, yeah? All the same to me, Dave. Good to see you all come out tonight. How are you feeling at the top? You alright? <laughs> Fucking full of Pakistanis at the top there. Just in case there's any trouble. All the good users are at the bottom here in the cheaper seats. We've got Punjabis in. Gujaratis. Wankers. Sukaris. Sukaris. White people. Fucking made it out. Black people. About five. Where you from, gangster? We're in Nigeria. We just took a flight to get here. We are going to watch some comedy. Let's go to Hammersmith, there's a brown bastard on there too. <laughs> so many English people in tonight, so many Indians. See, this guy's come out with his dad. You still with your parents? Kalpesh, whatever your name is. <laughs> you look like an Esh to me, some fucking Esh. Some kind of Esh, some kind of bullshit you come with. It's an Esh, I can tell it's a fucking Esh. Dave don't know what I'm talking about. He's going to get a shot of you anyway, just in case we want to put in the DVD. Some good news might buy it and fucking copy and give it to their mates. It's a problem, isn't it? It's a family thing. English people, your family give you a lot more independence. We're never allowed to leave our family home. You see, people even bring their children with them. Can't even afford a babysitter. Expensive. Just come with me, bastard. <laughs> no, Dad, I don't want to come. No, you come here, bastard. <laughs> You're coming with me. Fuck babysitter. <laughs> I mean, people don't believe in babysitters. The English people, you get a lot more independence. Because we're never allowed to leave our family home. Like you say, Dad, I want to move out. I want to live on my own. You want to do what, bastard? <laughs> I want to move out. You never leave the house, bastard. <laughs> you don't live here. I'm dead. You're dead. Everybody's dead. <laughs> and you still don't leave, bastard. English people look more independent. Say, when are you going to fucking move out, son? <laughs> you five now. When are you going to get out and get a job, you scrounge, you little slag? Yeah, get out and take your kids with you. So many different languages now. You've got Gujarati, English. So many, especially in this country. Now, there's so many languages. When I was growing up, we were the only people that spoke Punjabi in our area. Now, if you can't understand what someone's saying, listen out for the one word in English. You know exactly what that boss is talking about. I had one guy talking, oh my gas shoulder, the uh discounter. <laughs> you think that bastard wants a discount? <laughs> you think Punjabi people didn't end the word for discount? I thought discount was a Punjabi word. <laughs> That's like cockneys not having a word for slag. <laughs> or people in Birmingham not having a word for benefit. Anyone from Birmingham in tonight? White people from Birmingham. You want to fuck off back to your own country, mate, yeah?
When we were growing up, we didn't have any money growing up in the 70s, man. That was when tough times, you don't realize these little children, you don't know about it. We didn't have any money. You know you got no money when your family have to reuse margarine tubs. You're completely skin. You feel the family have to reuse margarine. You can't believe it's not butter. That's because it's mince meat in that shit. You put mince meat on your toast in the morning. We find ways to make stuff last longer. It's the truth. So my family came from the Punjab. We worked out methods. Uh, my family used to think water was a preservative. Like, say there was no soap in the house. My dad thought if you put water into the soap, you get more soap. <laughs> Not technically correct there, is it? Dad, there's no soap. Don't worry. Put water in the soap. Shake the soap. You got more soap. I've got water on my hands now. It's homeopathic soap. We used to have fish and chips once a week. Dad's. There's no ketchup. Don't worry. Put water in the ketchup. <laughs> Shake the ketchup. <laughs> you got more ketchup. <laughs> I'm going to remove all my chips. <laughs> I've got soggy chips now. I had so much water in my plate, the fish started swimming back again. Indian people think if you put stuff in the freezer, it lasts forever. It's a freezer, not a fucking time machine. <laughs> Fresh in the freezer. <laughs> we used to have stuff that was way past its sell by date. Chicken, fish, dodo. <laughs> Times have changed now, mate. Times have changed. 2012 now. When our dad came to this country, it was 1964. Tried to get accommodation in London, Wills and Green. And on the accommodation, it used to say, no blacks, no Irish, no dogs. That's the kind of shit we had to deal with. You think, what did the dogs have to do with this shit? <laughs> you think the dogs were trying to get accommodation? <laughs> no, if you can't speak the language, you better fuck off now, son. <laughs> Because you all remember that notorious Scooby-Doo episode, don't you? When Scooby tried to get accommodation in the 60s. Can't get no accommodation right here, Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> At the end, the caretaker didn't do it. He takes his mask off. It's John Terry. We don't live under that kind of racial class. Now we live in a world, when I was growing up, I used to get chased by skinheads. You know what I'm talking about, Neil? <laughs> you probably didn't have to experience this kind of shit. <laughs> Racist at the top. <laughs> you smoke them out slowly in the show. That's why I set out right at the top there. BNP. Different time now. Now we live in a world of passive racism. Like, people don't say, they kind of think it. What does passive racism even mean? Is that when you're standing around racist people and you start breathing in racist fumes? <laughs> <coughs> Black bastard. <coughs> oh, 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 damn, Dave. I'm breathing in all your fucking racism. If you're going to be racist in the car, Dave, at least put down the windows. <laughs> I'm breathing all these bollocks. <laughs> I was at the Edinburgh Festival, right, doing a show. Got some racial abuse at the show. So I'm going to take this further. And the guy said, we don't want to go any further. It doesn't reflect well upon the venue. I said, the room's not racist. It's the people that walked into it. 
You ever walked into a racist room before, Neil? And the room goes, white bastard. <laughs> and one day, no, I think it was the roommate. Because <laughs> if you think about it, the ghost and the spirit is always white. You know, the ghost is always white. That's racist. Black people die as well, you know. <laughs> I've never seen a black ghost before. I thought I saw a black ghost the other day, but it turned out to be a woman in a burqa. <laughs> I shit myself. <laughs> Dave, I thought Dave was about to leave. No, I can't date this bollocks. I'm, I don't know if I should or shouldn't laugh at this shit. <laughs> when I was growing up in the 70s, they used to openly advertise Daddy's Brown Sauce on TV. You can't let this day and age, can you? He doesn't sound right. Come and get some of Daddy's Brown Sauce, son. I got some of Daddy's Brown Sauce for you, mate. That was the advert. Come and get some of. Are you right, mate? Flashbacks. Is a good you're right, is it? So this, that is brown sauce, brown sauce, Everything's got to have a label on it now. When I was growing up, you used to have white bread. Then you had brown bread. Now you've got 50-50. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Mixed race bread? <laughs> you've got the brown bread in the middle, the 50 at the bottom, like some kind of inbred. But the mighty white's always at the top. The most racist bread. <laughs> Dangerous country. Anyone from London tonight? <laughs> Gangster shit. <laughs> Dangerous country. The government haven't clamped down on the situation of this country. You get stabbed in this country, they won't find the killers. But if you drive down the bus lane, They'll take a picture of you in the car and send you to your house within 48 hours. So if you get stabbed, make sure you get stabbed in a bus lane. It's contrary, even like the government haven't clamped down on road deaths people not wearing their seat belts. There was a campaign the government tried to have where this guy picks up a pizza, right? He's not wearing a seat belt. He crashes the car. Pizza's fucked up all over the place. <laughs> Pepperami everywhere. And he's dead. Second take, he picks up a pizza again. This time he's wearing a seat belt. He crashes the car again. Pizza's fucked up all over the place. Pepper army everywhere. But this time he survives. He says, what have you learned from this video? I'm like, get your pizza delivered. <laughs> what happens if the child stays with you for the rest of your life? <laughs> What's happening about people? Oh, shit. You know, Indians is a thing we used to get. Did you, you ever get beaten up by your dad? You do. What did he used to do to you? Touch you. <laughs> Let's try and keep this clean tonight. <laughs> ben, George, shut up, Ben. <laughs> you didn't have to go through that shit, did you, Neil? I'll call the police. Different thing. That's what happens to you as a kid. What happens to you as a kid stays with you for the rest of your life. Michael Jackson, prime example. What happened to him? He said his dad would beat the shit out of him. He stuck with him for the rest of his life. 
That's what happens to them. It stays in your memory. You, you, uh, you gotta sing some shit, you little motherfucker. Dad, I just want to see. You gotta sing Ben and shit like that. Dad, I just want to play with the kids. <laughs> Fuck the kids. <laughs> I stuck with him for the rest of his life. <laughs> what happens? Good, clean family, comedy. <laughs> Quite surprised so many Indians have come out tonight. <laughs> Paid to get in. <laughs> so a lot of Indian uncles don't come because there's a booking fee at these venues. I don't like paying a booking fee. <laughs> Why is a booking fee? I am booking. You pay me the fee, bastard. <laughs> and then they come into my show. They hate my guts. You shut up, bastard. <laughs> don't do it, bastard. You shut up. You ever get someone so angry they can't control their own face? Don't do it, bastard. <laughs> Shut up, bastard! There's his skin coming over. Look, there's a. You don't do it, bastard! Shut up! I'm telling you 12 times, 16 times, bastard! I'm telling you 98 times, 78 times, bastard! I'm telling you equal times, he's squared, bastard! Don't take a piss in me, bastard! You am trying to take a piss in you, uncle. Don't take a shit in me. Don't do it, bastard. <laughs> Let's go home and watch it on YouTube so free. That's the last time I did a show in a mosque. <laughs> Everyone getting drunk tonight? <laughs> Everyone had a drink? Yeah. Indians drinking as well? <laughs> Indians don't drink, innit? People think... Dave, you think, how come it is so? Is it because of religion, Mike? No, it's because of rounds. <laughs> if you're around, man. No, I, I don't drink anymore. <laughs> I don't drink. You just say it's more fucking round, Mike. No, 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 I have to go home. My wife is dead. <laughs> it's changed now. You know what I'm saying, Dave? You ever go out for a curry, Dave? My, all my English friends want to go out for a curry with me. Paul, let's go out for a curry, mate. Why would I want to go out for a curry? <laughs> you racist bastard. <laughs> and I'll say, Dave, let's go out for a Cornish pasty, mate. <laughs> but I'm not Cornish. <laughs> and I'm not fresh off the banana boat, Dave. Because if you think about it, you get a lot more preferential treatment. White people get treated a lot better than Asian people in Indian restaurants. Hey, please, Neil, come sit in where you want. <laughs> you want a table by the window, anything you need, tit job, hand job, anything. <laughs> anything you need for your wife, touching her, anything, bastard. <laughs> I come in, what do you want? Equal opportunities, that's what I want. <laughs> What's with this Bengali? <laughs> You're treated a lot different to us, you know? And if you think about Indian food, it's referred to as a laxative. <laughs> it's the most racist thing. <laughs> this food's going right through me, Dave. I was on the shitter of this fucking food, man. I've got to be on the shitter while I'm eating this. I've got to take a shit while I'm putting it in my mouth. It's that fucking hot, mate. What is it, Paul? It's a banana, Dave. <laughs> Racist bastard. Can't take the chilies, mate. Can't take the chilies. No, that's the way of breaking down racial. What's the name, madam? Tracy. <laughs> so I didn't make that up. Your real name is Tracy. 
How come you got so many Indian friends? <laughs> Family, Family. Family. Is that your son? Yeah. The thirteen-year-old you you married an Indian. <laughs> what the fuck happened to this country? So your family are half Sikh, half white? I apologize to anyone that's offended by what's happened here in the family. I didn't know anything about this shit. And we'll have them edited out this DVD. Don't get me wrong, my sister's with a white girl. We beat the fuck out of her. I said they learn, isn't it? <laughs> Do your family know about this guy yet and the two kids? I mean, <laughs> they never heard about it. Trace, who the fuck's that brown boss you're hanging about with? <laughs> He's got a turban and everything. <laughs> Controversial, Neil. <laughs> Stick to the whites over there, son. This is the way I think we could break down racial barriers. You speak any Punjabi? You go Gudwara and everything. She went, uh, yeah. <laughs> I go, oh, he kicks the fuck out of me, Danny. <laughs> Jeez, and that's the way you break down racial barriers, I think. If we put on each other's accents, Indian restaurant, put on a slight Indian accent. Like Van Popperdom. One chicken tikka masala, <laughs> one naan bread. I mean, don't take it too far. Like, bring it to me, bastard. Don't. <laughs> to change your voice, you've got to change your face to go with the one of butter, the chicken. <laughs> the chicken my, try, madam. One of butter, the chicken. One of butter, the chicken. Do it, bitch. One of butter, the chicken. So I'm going to do it. Racist. Basically. <laughs> I did that too much in this restaurant once. I was buying a butter, the chicken. The guy goes to me, You want dick sauce with that? <laughs> buying a butter, the chicken. You want dick sauce or not dick sauce? <laughs> I just dropped the accent at that point. Listen, man, forget the dick sauce. What kind of restaurant is this? I said thick sauce, not dick sauce. It's a pretty thick sauce when it came back. <laughs> Even a Chinese restaurant, you got to put in a, That's when I want racism. If I go to a restaurant, I want the food to have the same accent as the waiter if it was alive. Popper Dome. I want proper Bernard Manning 1978. Chinese, I want two rai, three rai, how many rai you want? <laughs> you want two, 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 two rai, how many rai you want? <laughs> I want proper two rai or three rai, I want proper Jackie Chan. Hmm, how many rai you order? <laughs> no, waiter, please, no violence, master. I want him to get so confused. Hmm, you want two rye or 17 rye? <laughs> I want him to get so confused he takes the other guy in the kitchen because you confuse him during the order. You want two rye, three rye, one pot, or two rye, one minute, one minute. So go for rye. So go for Fuck knows what I've just ordered. <laughs> and someone's going to get Jackie Chan in that kitchen. Like to tip as well. You go to restaurants. You know what I'm talking about, good Jews. You don't like to tip. <laughs> you don't even pay for the food. <laughs> English people love to tip. Uh, I went to this restaurant. A guy, a guy put a 20% service charge on the bill. I'm like, mate, this is a buffet. <laughs> I walked up to that table 17 times. <laughs> I'm like, give me a tip for this shit, oh. <laughs> service charge you think the way that these restaurants are run 
come into this restaurant. There was one restaurant that got shut down because they were storing flour in a bin and onion barges in a basket. So when health and safety turned up, they said, is that the bin or the bucket? Ah, bin, bucket, same thing. <laughs> is that the kitchen or the bathroom? Ah, kitchen, bathroom, same thing. <laughs> no, fridge or the ah, fridge, freezer, same thing. <laughs> is that the one for your cousin? Five cousin, same thing. <laughs> Any women in tonight? That's what I'm talking about. Love women. Big fan of women. Big fan. <laughs> I was watching this TV show the other day called Loose Women. <laughs> you seen that shit? Five people seen it? Let me explain what it's about for those of them that have jobs. It's a TV show about women with opinions. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's hard to believe in this room, isn't it? It's a TV show about women with opinions. If I want a woman's opinion, I'll go into the kitchen and ask her. I think we've lost the irony in this room tonight. <laughs> this is like, yeah, she does the washing, the irony, everything. Bastard. Sponsored by Maltesers. I'm look, that show has been syndicated around the world now. I'm looking forward to the Middle Eastern version, the show called Libyan Women. It's a show about women without opinions. They just sit around a table and no one says anything. Sponsored by falafels. <laughs> Where's all the single women tonight? <laughs> One over here. What's your name? Nazmi. It's my ex-girlfriend's dad's name. <laughs> your Facebook. I'll pop the shits out of you when I get home. <laughs> Roads on Facebook. I'm on Twitter as well. I don't understand Twitter. If I want to follow someone, I'll do it in a raincoat. <laughs> and Facebook. Oh, let's be friends on Facebook. I ain't seen you in ages. There's a reason I ain't seen you in ages. <laughs> I never liked you in real life, you bastard. <laughs> I've got loads of friends. I've got 758 friends. I go, how come you got so many friends? and you've taken your own picture in the mirror with a camera phone. <laughs> I can see your arm in the picture. <laughs> LOL. You know what my face is doing when I'm typing LOL? This is me. Laugh out loud. <laughs> They're not real friends. I tested that friendship. I bought the status update, I'm going to kill myself. I've got 11 likes. <laughs> Fuck these friends. Because <laughs> that's where people are meeting now. People meet online more than they do in real life now. Match.com. They've got an equivalent in the Asian community called Shadi.com. <laughs> a lot of people here on Shadi.com. Let me just explain what Shadi means to the people. Shadi in Hindi is marriage.com. I went into that website. After all, I got through to londonzoo.com. <laughs> there were some hairy bitches on Shadi.com. <laughs> and they rejected me. 
we're hairy people, you know. First time I was always hairy is when I fell asleep on the carpet and my mum accidentally hoovered me. It's difficult, you know. Sometimes girls tell you too much too soon. I took this girl out on a date, right, from Australia.com. I thought I'll take her to a very expensive restaurant, right. We're sitting there, it's going quite well. She goes, I want to tell you something. What is it? Oh, it doesn't matter. Just tell me. Just leave it. Just, just tell me. I right, just forget it. Just tell me. All right, well, I've changed. What do you mean changed? <laughs> Used to be a man. <laughs> no, I'm different now. But I used to be a right slag. <laughs> well, you better turn back time. <laughs> I'll just call you Nando's. It's, it's difficult, you know, especially when you don't know how hard it is to approach someone. And sometimes girls don't give a fuck. So I shout, what do you want from me? <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> well, uh, look at you. <laughs> uh. Uh. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, bitch. What do you want from me? I want to just lower your fucking voice, that's what I want. <laughs> You've got to tell everyone else in this shit how I'm getting blown out. Uh, uh, uh. It's with the attitude. I just want a quiet night out. I just want a quiet night out. Why is everyone talking to me? I want a quiet night out. Why are you talking to me? Because you're in a loud club with your tits and arse hanging out. <laughs> if you're not quiet now, pour a burker on. <laughs> no one's gonna fuck with you when you're wearing a full veil. <laughs> then you'll have a quiet night out, bitch. <laughs> but men are the worst, you know. Have you seen men get blown out and they're like, yeah, yeah, look at you. Yeah, you're boss anyway. <laughs> you fucking boss anyway, innit? <laughs> you're fucking lesbian, innit? <laughs> and now she's a lesbian, you being blown out. <laughs> it's difficult, especially the attitude, girls. So the worst thing is, you ever tried to talk to a girl on a girl's night out? You try and talk to a girl on a girl's night out? You think you'll talk to one of the girls, you'll take the courage to talk to her, and the jealous friend will come and fuck up that conversation. <laughs> it's always the one with the hunchback from Gremlins too, as well, isn't it? <laughs> that, <laughs> like something like a Michael Jackson thriller video. <laughs> What do you want from my friend? You leave her alone. <laughs> Bitch, you leave me alone. <laughs> if I want to talk to you, I'll run to Azkaban. <laughs> it's like Harry Potter. Because <laughs> Asian men are very possessive. They hold on to their women. And you know they're fucking... <laughs> you know they're getting tired because their arms are so... There's no blood left in the arm because you say... <laughs> what the fuck you learn, bitch? I want to go to the toilet. You do it here, innit? <laughs> You're fucking going anywhere. <laughs> Don't fucking disrespect me, yeah? <laughs> Don't make me look bad in front of my boys, yeah? Because <laughs> okay, they all go out in a group of... It's like one Asian girl amongst 25 blokes. <laughs> you fucking go, you might chirps you, get your... BBM or some shit, innit? <laughs> iPhone pin and shit, innit? 
That's the terminology. Brad, you need iPhone, pin me, BBM me, WhatsApp me, take your shit on me. It's all right, mate. I want you a letter instead. You go, guys, fucking don't fucking. Don't fucking, bitch. Don't fucking then. Who the fuck just texted you? Who the fuck is mum? You're not fine, mum. I'm gonna kill him, yeah? You're too possessive. It's difficult, isn't it? It's like, because it's hard for Asian women, isn't it? Hard for Asian women because they're treated like possessions, like a car. They're like their families are buying a car for them. They have to look at the log book, <laughs> service history, <laughs> mileage, <laughs> how many previous owners, <laughs> take it for a test drive. <laughs> and then you find out she's got an oil leak. Life has changed now. When I was growing up, there were different programs. Like these kids are watching programs like Rasta Mouse. That was, had a record number of complaints on the BBC. So people, I don't want my child to watch Rasta Mouse in case he comes home and smokes his spliff. It's a Rasta Mouse. It wasn't some kind of Jamaican yardy gangster mouse. The mouse isn't coming on TV. Why you see me? Me a Rasta Mouse rude boy. <laughs> danger Mouse, Danger Mouse a Bopty boy. <laughs> he live with Penfold, he a Chichi man, see? <laughs> I don't think it was that kind of relationship, mate. <laughs> Saying Jamaicans are... Like, Jamaicans ain't scared of anything. I was, there was a tsunami and a hurricane in Jamaica, and CNN went out there. People weren't even leaving their houses. Jamaicans weren't scared of shit. There was a hurricane coming. It was like, hurricane, test me now, hurricane. <laughs> Come now, tsunami. <laughs> me shot up every blood clot, tsunami, why if you test me? <laughs> Come now, body boy, tsunami, see? <laughs> I don't think it works that way, Errol. <laughs> there was a show I saw, MTV, 16 and pregnant. Can you believe that shit? This is a show now, 16 and pregnant. And it gives white people a bad name. <laughs> I'm 16, I'm pregnant, Pet's gonna help me. It's so so weird now. If that came out in this community, it wouldn't be called 16 and pregnant, it would be called 16 and dead. <laughs> My daughter got pregnant, so we killed the bitch. <laughs> We're not very happy, she's dead now. <laughs> it wouldn't be on MTV, it would be on Panorama. Because <laughs> if you think about it, you know, like, even in this country, you've got strip clubs up and down the country. You got all these Asian guys going strip clubs all the time. I used to go, and strip clubs are not a good thing. So I used to go to strip clubs, right? And it's not good. I went once, the guy goes to me, hey, mate, you can't come. There's so many hypocrisies involved. You can't come in, mate. You got trainers on. Trainers? That bitch is going to have her tits and arse hanging out. <laughs> and about five minutes' time. And then disrespect to all my trainers. I better go home and put my three-piece suit on <laughs> in case her parents turn up. Because <laughs> we're going to have the first generation of old-age pensioners in this country with tit implants. Can you believe that? You're going to have old-age pensioners like grannies go, I remember when I was in the club stripping. I used to listen to music like my lamps, my lovely lady lamps. <laughs> Check them out. They're down to my knees now. <laughs> I used to listen to hip hop like uh, inside of the membrane. I'm inside of the brain. 
I'm inside of the membrane. I'm inside of the brain. I'm inside of the membrane. I'm inside of the brain. I'm inside. See an old dementia. I'm inside of the brain. I'm an OAP diddy. Mobility, my problems. I'm living in a grandson's paradise. Hip hop. I need a hip hop. Any couples in here tonight? Yeah. Well, couples. Boo, people are booing the couples. <laughs> it should be a couple. Straight marriage, no relationship. <laughs> this is not good family comedy. <laughs> uh, people say to me, you know, uh, oh, what's your fantasy? Who do you most like to be stuck in a lift with? I'm like the lift engineer. <laughs> I want to make you have this shit alive. You know what scares me, those couples? Couples that, you know those couples that kiss in public? And they get out some family freedom and they, they're in clubs and they kiss. <laughs> They do that shit. You can say everything you can say. Don't do that shit around me. You know what they do when they do that around me? I just join in. I don't need to see that shit. Those couples that always hold hands as well. You know those hand-holding bastards? <laughs> oh, we love each other, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love each other, yeah. Hold on to my fucking hand. Because <laughs> I love you, yeah. What's the matter with these bastards? <laughs> oh, but we love each other, yeah. You gotta walk around these bastards to get to the other side of the road. <laughs> because we love each other, yeah! Yeah? Well, get the fuck out of my way! <laughs> Before I kick those hands through the middle. I wouldn't condone that kind of behavior. It turned out to be his carer. But we love each other, yeah. It's difficult isn't it, making a first move on a woman, man. It's difficult because you've got to you got to pace it right. You don't know how to. I remember to this girl on a date. I didn't know what to do, so I thought, you know, touch her knees. Good place to start. She started screaming. <laughs> then I covered her mouth. <laughs> then she started shaking. The next thing you know, she's in the boot in the car and driving to the woods. <laughs> Fucks everything up, you know. It's difficult, you know, making the first move. And we love embarrassing situations, though, don't we? People love embarrassing shit. If someone falls over, that's the funniest thing <laughs> a human being can see. He fell over. Ah, <laughs> bastard. <laughs> Any language, Mr. Bean is the funniest thing. People fall over. The only thing funnier than seeing someone falling over is if you hear someone falling over. Because <laughs> you picture it in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing funnier than that, though, is if someone falls down the stairs. Because it's repetitive. <laughs> that shit keeps on happening. I remember my cousin once, AJ, fell down the stairs on the phone. But the bastard tried to act as if it didn't happen. But I heard the bastard fall down the stairs. Which is funny than seeing him falling down the stairs. I'm like, can I speak to AJ, please? I'll call him. AJ, phone. Uh, coming. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. 
This shit never happened. Which is funny than seeing you falling down the stairs, you bastard. I pictured that shit in my mind. The only thing funnier than that, though, is someone falls out of a window. You're not supposed to fall out of a window. I remember when I was at school, right, Dave fell out of a window. And what happened to Dave? He was like, he fell out of a window. I was like, ah! no, he's dead. You need to finish off your sentences, mate. Don't try and get my information out before your sentence finishes. So someone says, what do you think of Neil? Neil, he's an arsehole. Oh, really? He's my best friend. <laughs> Don't try and get my information. You need to finish off your sentences. I'm saying you call him an arsehole, not me. Because if you think laughing, do you ever get the people that laugh too much, they tell you a story? I was at work the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just funny, I can't even tell you this. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I can't remember now. <laughs> you just wasted four hours of my life on this shit. <laughs> same with when they cry. People, crying and laughing, same emotion. Indian people lose their minds. <laughs> Indian funerals last forever. You know what I mean, Dave? You, 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 English people die. Fuck, it's chuck him in a bin. Fuck it. <laughs> He's dead, mate. Put him in the bin. Let's have a wake. <laughs> Let's get pissed up, because that's what you would have wanted. <laughs> Indian funerals last about three weeks. I might have got back. Who fired your dying bastard? <laughs> How do you know him? I don't know him. <laughs> uh, uh, bastard, you dead. <laughs> Same emotion. I think laughing and crying. Even weddings. In Indian couples, a lot of married people in the room. All my Indian friends from school, all married. English friends, different story. I, same conversation with both parties. Indian friends, congratulations, mate. When did you meet your fiance? I met her last week, innit? <laughs> when are you getting married? I'm getting married next week, innit? <laughs> My English friends, how long have you been with your girlfriend, Dave? I've been married about 15 years, mate. When are you getting married? i got no plans. <laughs> I don't want to rush into anything. <laughs> Why fuck it up now? They try and save on everything. The marriages last about four and a half weeks. You know, you lot registry up. Stamp it, bot, fuck off. <laughs> England people, when they get married, they try and cut on the cost. Even they get these big marriages, they'll invite everyone over, but they don't want to pay for it. You know, they have plastic plates. <laughs> they, they import the invitations from India because they don't want to pay for the printing costs <laughs> in this country. The problem is, when you print the invitations in India, the invitations come back to this country and they actually smell of India. <laughs> you might as well put shit to someone's letterbox. <laughs> Did someone just put a shit in my letterbox, mate? <laughs> no, my daughter is getting married. <laughs> she smells like shit. How did you meet your Doris, Neil? In the pub? <laughs> well, I'm 
talk about fucking in the pub, give her one tire on pause. <laughs> Look what all these Pakistanis have to go through. They've got to import one from Pakistan. <laughs> no pub business. Hey, buddy, you have to get a flight and everything. There's no pub business. They went down the pub, got light bollocks. Pub. So many arranged marriages, forced marriages. Forced marriage. See, the mainstream public don't understand forced marriages and arranged are two very different things. Arranged is like even when you introduce someone, you know someone through the family. Forced is, you might have had a bastard. <laughs> And that makes people racist. When people hear shit like that, people start getting more racist. You know what makes people the most racist? When they call up their bank. Because apparently